Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to this afternoon's webinar, Evidence and Learning Using Book Creator App. My name is Jenny Mackay and I'm joined by my colleague Susan Say and we are Digital Skills Development Officers with Education Scotland. During this afternoon's webinar, please use the conversation space at the right side of the screen to record any questions that you may have and we'll get back to you during this afternoon, either by text or we'll stop the presentation and we'll answer them verbally. Um, beyond that, you can um, pop any questions you have in the team where this webinar has taken place and we'll answer you as soon as we get the message through. Okay. So for those of you who are new to Book Creator, Book Creator is a really interactive professional product which allows you to create um, a range of books that can include video, um, photographs and a range of other media. It can also be combined with a range of other tools to produce um, interactive storybooks, digital portfolios, the evidence, learning and teaching experiences that may have gone on over an IDL project, a term or a school academic year. It can be used in a range of subjects in a wide variety of ways such as research journal or as a science report and it also has a range of backgrounds making it um, easy to use for things like music instruction as there's manuscript paper and things involved. It can be added to as long as the book um, creator um, app is available to you and as long as your book is still available on the device. So at any time you can return to that book and add in new pages. It can, it's a really nice tool to use to create um, all about me books, especially at this time of year when we're thinking about transition. Young people can personalise a document that can be exported in a range of ways and Susan is going to talk about that just shortly. Um, and these can include uh, videos, um, photographs, audio files and allows the young person to tell their new teacher or new setting, some information about themselves, things they're looking forward to and so on. Whilst we're not looking at comic book adventures today, um, the paid for app, and we're only looking at the free app today, which is called Book Creator One, but the full um, Book Creator app will allow you to create comic adventures. Um, these are different formats of the layout of the page as opposed to just a blank space, um, and they're really flexible. But again, we're not looking at that today, we're only covering the things which are free. So regardless of which version of Book Creator you use, there's a range of built-in tools available to everyone which can be used when um, demonstrating the learning and teaching that's taken place. So you have a range of text and a full range of comprehensive text formatting buttons as well as personalisation as I mentioned just before around um, a range of backgrounds. You can insert photographs both live, so um, during an experience, you may want to take a photograph and insert it straight away, um, and that can be done from within the app, as well as inserting videos um, and photographs from your device's library. You can have um, your completed book narrate back to you. So again, if we think about younger learners, maybe anybody with an accessibility issue, the, the any text that's contained within the book that you have created will read itself back to you if you so wish. And again, there's um, audio buttons which can be inserted so that you can give verbal feedback. A young person can record their um, understanding and their comments, and that allows it to be really flexible. There's a range of built-in drawing tools, shapes and stickers, which are really comprehensive. And in addition to being able to export a book creator when you finish with it, um, you can then um, import files to a page within your book. So within your book, you could import, um, for example, a PDF or a document that further expands or demonstrates the learning and teaching that's been going on. So this afternoon, we're going to look at how to create, how to access Book Creator, the benefits of using rich media, um, how Book Creator works, how you create a book and all of the processes that can be done within it. We're then going to show you how to share, export and publish your book, as well as teacher feedback and help and support. So, how do you access it? So, Book Creator is available on the internet, on most web browsers, so Chrome, Safari, Edge, and if you're using an iPad, it's suitable for iOS 11 and up. As I've said, we're using only the free app today. It's Book Creator One. There is a paid for app, which is usually just under five pounds. Um, 
and there is also a library that you can create on their website so you can create one teacher account and um, can create up to 40 books for free anything more than that requires um a subscription or payment um, but with any of the apps that you're using free or otherwise please ensure that your local authority has approved um, the use of book creator and that also any data sharing agreements or processes um, have been uh, are you're complying with any dpias so it's always worth contacting your information security officer or your digital learning team just to clarify the exact position to ensure that you're um, staying within what your local authority would like you to do okay rich media allows our young people to enhance their digital literacy skills it allows them to combine skills they may already have with new ones and to use that to represent their learning experiences, evidence progression, as well as to build their own confidence. It allows us to share um, in an accessible way and these can all be used as useful reflection tools when developing next steps with learning. So at that, I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Susan, who's going to give you a live demonstration of all of these tools that Book Creator has built in. Okay, thanks for that, Jenny. I'm just going to put my iPad on the screen just now and I'll make it full size. Okay, so what we're going to focus on today is just the free version of Book Creator can be downloaded from the App Store if you have an Apple device and Jenny's outlined all the different other platforms that it is available on. So I'm just going to open up my Book Creator app and this is my bookshelf. I've got all my books sitting here on my bookshelf if, if you have the paid for version. If you have the free version, you can only have one book sitting there. We are going to talk about how you can export your books and see if you do have the free version, you can export your book when you're finished and then start again and create a new one. So to create a new one, you click on the new book at the top right hand side with the orange box around it. With the paid for version, you have the comic style at the bottom, which are really useful, especially if you get any young people that struggle with a blank template. However, we're going to focus on the blank ones, blank templates at the top because that's what you get with the free version. So I'm going to go for landscape because that's the one that will fill the entire screen. So now I have my cover, you'll see it's a nice, simple interface, the Book Creator app. At the top right hand side, there's just three buttons. There's a play button, the, rec the triangle. There's an I button, that's the edit button. And the plus if you want to add anything to your book. At the other side, you can see there's my books. It takes me back to all my bookshelf. And there's also pages, so when you, want, when you do create your book, you can then change the page order, a bit like what you do if you're creating a PowerPoint presentation. So I want to change the background of my cover. So to do that, I'm going to click on the I button at the top right. And there's lots of backgrounds you can choose from. You can see there's solid colours, there's comic styles, there's borders, there's paper. So you've got graph paper, line paper, dotted paper and music paper. However, I'm just going to go with the borders and I'm going to select the one with the pencils because this is going to be my portfolio book. Jenny's outlined already all the different ways that Book Creator can be used in the classroom. I'm just using a My Digital Portfolio as an example, but hopefully you will see how you could use it with your learners in your environment. So I'm just going to click on the plus because I'd like to add some content. So let me just zoom in here. So when you click on the plus, you can browse your camera roll. Now, in our previous session, when we're talking about creating um, different materials using different apps, we always say that to, you have to save that content to your camera roll. Whether it's a photograph, a video, an animation, if it's saved to your camera roll, then you can do something with it. So that's exactly the same as Book Creator. So I can go into my camera roll and I can pull up my photographs, slideshows, videos, etc. I can also take live footage straight into my book. So if I was outside, for example, outdoor learning, I could be taking pictures outside, looking at signs of spring as an example, and that picture sort of goes straight into my book. I can use the pen tool, which is really useful for early years and also useful for writing equations. The text tool will just add some text onto your page. 
but I can also use odd sound to add some narration to my page, which is really useful to capture pupil voice. So that all comes under media. Next to media, we have more. And this is where we can use the embed tool. So we can embed videos possibly from YouTube. We can also embed some maps. We can browse our files so we can actually save documents and then import the documents into our book using the files. And we can add some shapes. So let's just go back. Well, there's shapes actually just now. So let me get rid of the magnifier. And I just want to add a shape to my page. When you add content to your book, you'll see that the blue line appears around it. And that's because it's been selected. If I click away with my finger, it's now not selected. So throughout this webinar, I'm going to be talking about selecting. And that just means that you click with your finger on the object. The object could be a shape, it could be a video, it could be a piece of text. Now for this shape, I'm just going to use one of the object handles and make it slightly bigger. And I'm just going to put it over at the side there because now I'd like to add some text on top of it. So I'm going to click on the plus, then go to add text. I'm just going to type up my digital portfolio. Now you can see that the text is fairly small, so I need to select the text before I can edit. And as I just discussed, to select it, I simply click on it with my finger. It's now selected, so I can now choose the edit button, which is the I at the top right hand side. I now have a slider so I can make my text much larger. I can also go in and I can change the font and I can change the color. I can also change the alignment on the right hand side. Once I'm happy, I can use the blue handle to drag the text box and I could make the text go in one line if I wanted. But I'm just going to leave it in three lines because I'd like it to sit in the middle of that circle. I now like to add a picture to my front cover. So remember, it's a plus. I'm going to browse my camera roll because I know I have a picture that I'd like to use. Again, I can resize it, position it, and now I'm happy with my front cover. So with my book, I'm now ready to add some more pages. And I'd like this because it's my portfolio. I'm going to create some pages with different curricular areas. So I'm going to click on the arrow on the right hand side. And my first page is going to be my numeracy page. I'm just going to add some text by clicking on the plus, selecting text, and adding the word numeracy. I'm going to use the object box because I'd like it to be the width of my page. I'm going to move it up to the top. And then I'm going to click on the I button to edit the text because I'd like it to be a bit smaller. And I'd also like to change the background colour because I'd like the colour of the header to be the same as Curriculum for Excellence. So let me just click on the background. And I'm just going to choose the lilac colour. And that's my numeracy page. So if you just bear with me, I'm just going to add a few more pages for my curricular areas. So I'm just going to add a literacy page. It's got built in machine learning so the app knows that I wanted a purple background for my text and it's remembered the size I want. I'm just going to change it manually because I'd like the background to be red for literacy. The next one, same again, click add text and the next one will be health and well-being. Again, I'm just going to drag it so it's in one line. And I'm just going to change the colour so it's green. The next one, technologies. Click done. Same scenario, click and drag, change the background colour. And the last one is going to be wider achievement. Click and drag. Let's make this one orange. OK, so now when I go into my pages, you can see I have my front cover and I have my numeracy, literacy, health and wellbeing technologies and wider achievement pages. 
Now, in theory, this could be a template. This could be a template that I push out to my young people so it's ready for them to populate with our latest and best work. So let's pop into the numeracy page because I would just like to demonstrate how easy it is to add content to my book. So I'm just going to click on the plus and this time I'm going to go into the photos because I'd like to upload a video that I created using the app Clips because it is my numeracy example. I'm just going to click on news. Bear with me just to share my screen again. Well, the video loads. So once the video loads, you'll see automatically it has a blue handle, object handle. So I can click and drag and make it an appropriate size. So just pop it over there. I now want to add a narration. So I'm going to click on the plus and this time add sound. We had to find out the most popular method of getting to school by people from people in my class. We created a form, we then exported the data into Excel and then created a clips movie to show how we did it. When you click yes, the recording then pops onto your page and again, you can resize it if you so wish. So that's how you can add a video and you can add a narration. I now like to add a shape, so I'm just going to go plus and more. And this time I want to add a thought bubble. So these are really nice for capturing information from our young people, the speech bubbles and the thought bubbles. You can see automatically it's prompting me to add some text, but this time I'd like to test the dictation tool, so the speech to text facility. Now that can be accessed on the left hand side of the space bar that's automatically there on an Apple keyboard. We found out the most popular way to get to school in our class was by car or by walking. Now that text was too much for the speech bubble. So what I have to do is click on it to select it and drag the object handle so it can fit into the bubble. And then just going to drag the thought bubble down a bit. So I'm happy with this page. Let's move on to the literacy page by clicking on the arrow on the right hand side. So this time I want to add a video again, and this time it was a video that I used creating um, by um, using Puppet Pals. So there's my video and it's way to pop into my page. Let's click and drag it and make it slightly smaller. And I would like to add some text. So click on the plus, add some text. And I'm going to use the dictate again. Our project is about ancient Egypt. Full stop. This presentation includes information about Egyptian gods, comma, pharaohs, comma, temples, and pyramids. Full stop. You'll see, remember, there's built-in machine learning, so it's remember that I wanted an orange background for my text. However, in this instance, I don't want the orange background. So what I'm going to do is edit it by clicking on the I. And for background, I'm going to select none this time. If I click back, I can also make my text slightly smaller so it doesn't take up too much of the page. I'm just going to drag it over a wee bit. So that's a text to go with information on this page. And because I talked about a presentation, that was something I created in an app called Pages. Now, Pages is a bit like um, Word, but it's for an iPod. And there's also an option for creating books in the Pages app if you want to explore that further. So what I'm going to do is click on the plus, and this time more, and I'm going to go into Files. And here you can see my Ancient Egypt Pages document is there. So I'm just going to drag it over there. Now, if I wanted to view that document, I'd have to click on the title twice, and it would open up and let me see what was inside that document. But usefully, that's included in my book. So that's my pages document. Let's make it a little bit smaller. The last thing I want to add is just a picture from my library. So plus photos, Let's go into the library, select my picture, and I'll just put her down there. 
Okay, so I'm happy with my literacy page. Let's go on to the next page, which is health and well-being. So I was actually creating a spreadsheet of how I felt every day. And again, again, that's something really useful to use with your young people. If they've only got access to a computer, it could be an Excel spreadsheet. It could be just simply something written on a piece of paper. I used an app called Numbers, which is the equivalent of Excel on an iPod. So let's click on the plus. Let's click on more and files. And you can see that my weekly health and well-being PDF has been saved. If I add it as a numbers document, it will appear like this. If I add it as a PDF, it will appear like this. So you can see the PDF version actually gives a preview of what the document looks like. Where the numbers document, you'd have to double tap on it to view it. So it's entirely what works best for you and your young people. So that's the PDF or the numbers document. I'm also going to demonstrate the pen tool here. It's going to be a very simple demonstration. So the plus and then pen. You can also add emojis from here and you can also select different colours for your pen. I'm just going to draw a very simple picture here just to demonstrate. But again, earlier I said that this would be really useful for early level, but also useful for numeracy and maths if you wanted to write equations. That's also an object. So I've got the object handle to make it bigger or smaller. And I can also move about my page. So that's a very quick demonstration of the pen tool. The next one I want to demonstrate is how you can add a link from possibly YouTube or any other website by using the embed tool. So let me just pop on to YouTube. I've got my video here. The arrow at the very top here allows you to grab the link. So that's your export. So let me just click on export. I'm then going to use copy link down at the very bottom. If I double click my home button, this opens up all the apps I've been working on. So I can pop back into Book Creator quickly and easily. So let's click on the plus more at the bottom and this time web embed. Now you'll see there's also a YouTube video already there. Now this is a link I have just um, copied because again, there's built-in machine learning so it knows I've just selected a link. So let's click next. It'll give me a preview of what my video is. I can change the title if I so wish and then click done. Again, I can resize it and put it into my page. So let's add some text to go along with this video. Same scenario, plus, text. Um, I created this animation using stop go animation. And there's my text to go along with my animation. The last page is my wider achievements. So I've been using GarageBand in my extra time and I'd like to share that with my teacher. So let's click on the plus and I want to add a photo because I took a screenshot of my song. And the screenshot looks like this. So GarageBand's a really useful app. So instead of your pupils trying to look for copyright free music online, then they could actually create their own music using the GarageBand app but it's really useful because you can then export that into Book Creator. So let's open up GarageBand. If I hold my finger on my song, I can then click Share. Share the song. Click Share again. And here's the option for Book Creator up here. So there's already made that connection. So I click Book Creator. It's going to export my song and I will be able to take my song into my ebook. So just bear with me for a few seconds. It just, just takes a wee minute just to compress the file and make it available in the Book Creator application. It just means that your young people or yourself can be working on different apps, creating different kinds of media, but then pulling all that content, knowledge and information into the one place, the one-stop shop that is your book creator. 
double tap, let's go back into Book Creator. I'm going to click on the plus. You'll now see there's a new option appeared along the top. So on, beside the, the plus at the top, you scroll down, there's media, more, and now they're shared. So when I click on shared, you can see there's an audio file that wasn't there before. So I'm just going to click on audio and I'm going to add it as a button. If you add it as a soundtrack, it does add the music as a soundtrack for your book, which again is another nice option to have. If I click on play, hopefully you will hear it. Okay, so then let's look at what we've created so far. So I'm just went into pages. I'm going to click on my cover to take me back to the very start. At the top right hand side, I have the play button. So I am going to now click on play to see what my book looks like. So the front cover, I have my title, I have my nice background and I have a picture, which is just a bit moji. I can then scroll like a real book and view my numeracy page where I have my embedded sound. We had to find out the most popular method of getting. I've got my thought bubble with my conclusion my information, and I've also got an embedded video in here. We wanted to find out how we got to school. We created a Microsoft form in Glow. We shared the form with our class using QR code. This was our form. There were 28 responses. We could see the responses in a pie chart. If we clicked on the chart, we could see the percentages. We opened the data in Excel. We removed the columns we didn't need. We sorted the column alphabetically. We wanted to create an animation in Keynote. We added a pie chart with the data. We then added some graphics. That's my numeracy page. I've got my literacy page with my Egyptian project information. I have my video. I'll just pause that just now. Oops. I've also got my pages document. So again, if I double, if I click on it, I can just scroll through that document. So all the work that's involved in that Egyptian project can be pulled into that one page or that book, whatever suits you better. Next page, health and wellbeing. I have my PDF of my spreadsheet that outlines how I'm feeling each morning. And I've got my daily exercise noted as well. I've also got it as a numbers sheet. So if I click on it, it will open up that document within the book. So that's two ways. The one document can be saved as a pages document or a PDF, which is exactly the same as what we could do with Excel. But I also have my pen tool at the bottom right where I could add my own drawings. Um, I could um, draw anything on the page, handwriting or equations. The next page was my embedded video from YouTube for my technologies, where I've got text at the bottom, but I have my embedded video. So I'll just leave that just now. And the last page was my wider achievement where I've been using GarageBand. I could have put some text in there or another narration in there, but instead I've just embedded the song. The other thing I can do when I'm in this mode, if I click my finger along the top, I've got the option to read to me. Wider achievement. 
So for each and all learners, it will read all the text back and it will then automatically go to any sound files or video files and play them automatically. You can change that in the settings, which is next to read to me at the right hand side, where you can choose to turn the pages yourself so things won't play automatically and you can turn off the play multimedia automatically. You can also change the voices if you so wish. So when I click done at the top left hand side, that takes me back to my book, my um, main editable cover. So I can choose to add more pages or to edit the book even further, but I'm just going to click on my books at the very top left hand side. When I click on my books, that takes me back to my bookshelf. So just now, if there's no questions, Jenny, I will move on and demonstrate some examples. Yeah, no, we're OK at the moment. Thank you, Susan. Excellent. So no questions about creating a book. So what I'm going to do now is show you some examples and then we'll come back to this book and show you how you can export and share the books you are creating. So let's just move along my bookshelf here. So this one is Tim Peake's Spacewalk, which is really exciting, especially after SpaceX at the, at the weekend. So this one was created a few years ago. It is in the style of a comic style. So when I open it up, you can see that the page is divided like a comic. comic. So, so the young person's added some nice dynamic pictures. Hopefully we'll know that NASA's pictures are copyright free, which are really nice to use for educational only purposes. You can also add some text and you can add some sounds. So within here we have pupil voice. Friday 15th January 2016, Tim Peake became the first British astronaut to walk in space. He was walking in space 250 miles above Earth. So you'll notice that sound file looks slightly different from the ones that I've been adding. And that's because there's an option to make them invisible. So that means if you are sharing a book online or saving it into iBooks, then the embedded sound can be embedded into a graphic and it, it will look invisible. And I'm just going to show you quickly before I forget where that option is. So if you select it and then click the I button to edit, this one over here says invisible in iBook. So that's been enabled. So that's an extra click if you want to make your sound file slightly transparent but invisible when you're exporting it to any other platforms. And you can see how she's pulled all that information together. If I click on the speech bubbles, there should be some information somewhere. And she's got nice dynamic pictures. So that's one way of pulling together all that content knowledge from that particular um, project. So let's go back to my books and look at something else. So a couple of years ago, National Digital Learning Week, we had schools over Scotland participating in a national collaborative story. So they created their story on a Word document that was then passed from school to school. And we just thought it'd be a really nice way then to pull all that story information together in the shape of an ebook. So again, the end user can just scroll through the book. The first page outlines what schools were involved. And we have the story starter with some nice graphics, nice backgrounds, and everything is in the one place, which is a bit more enticing than just a Word document. So that's how that one was used. The next one is a maths example. So if I open up the maths book, we can see we've got some embedded sounds in here and the young person has been using the pen tool. Once you have finished marking off the values of Soka Toa, you can now use the formula which has the most ticks. She's also taken a picture of her daughter, so instead of just typing that information or writing it again, she's just taken a photograph because the, the um, book creator has that flexibility to take a live picture straight in there and then she's added some student narration to go along with it. She's also managed to share that book with our teacher and our teacher has given her some verbal feedback in the narration um, part as well. She then used an app called Easy Teach, which is a simple, basic whiteboard application that records everything the young person is drawing and also captures their voice. So this was a really simple example of counting up two digit numbers. Okay. 
Windows also have a, a Windows 10 whiteboard app, which again is, is really useful. That's just a very basic example. The next one is more of a secondary example. So if you've got any young people that are taking art, then they have to find out about artists, designers and art history. So the first page is about an artist, Katriona Miller. So we've got a bit of background about Katriona. I've got an example of the young person's piece of artwork with an embedded sound. I like Katriona Miller's art because it is bright and bold and very cartoon-like. Also have a bit about the designer, Vivian Westwood. But the last page is about Monet. And it particularly focuses on Monet's early work. So the young person managed to find copyright free materials of his early work. She took that pictures into iMovie and she added on titles, transitions and background music. So she had this end product, this video to, to show for her learning. But then she took that video, saved it into her camera roll. And as we all know now, if she hits the plus in Book Creator, she can then import that video into her book. And that's exactly what she did. So really powerful using more than one app to pull together content knowledge, but then taking it all into Book Creator to exemplify it. Next one here, this um, primary school in Aberdeenshire, they used Book um, Creator for reporting. And we've got a wee example there. And we've also got a cell biology. So this was a biology um, student that pulled together all their information into an ebook. They use the comic style, so you can see it's been divided up with text and pictures and stickers and again, embedded sounds with the student voice. A nice big dynamic graphic there. And by adding sounds, that's really useful because we are going to be talking about exporting at the end of this. So some schools do export their books as videos. So if you export the book as a video, it means that you have the student narration going with each page. So you don't just have to expect your end user to read all the text. So you could have the, the text. I used a unicellular fungus. The diagram on the left. You get the idea. But this one here, it was an animation. So during one of their lessons, they were looking at um, the cell membrane. So they pulled together that information. They created a script or a storyboard. They searched background graphics. They worked together and then they created this really nice little animation. But that was only part of the work. So they pulled that animation into this book. So everything was in the one place. Let's find out about the cell membrane. All the cells are enclosed by the cell membrane. The structure has two layers and is represented in the diagram behind us. Can you see the extracellular environment? Yes, that's the area outside the cell. Each layer has two components lipids and proteins. Did you know lipids have two layers? You can see these in the diagram behind us. The lipid molecules are able to move around within the layers and give the cell membrane flexibility. You get the idea. And then the book just goes on. And the last example I'd like to show you is a French language book. So really useful for, them, for modern languages and embedding one plus two in a primary school environment. So we've got a nice front cover, we've got all about me, we've got the French text, we've also got the embedded sound. And we've also got embedded sounds behind each one of these colours. Marron. Rouge. Vert. So she's added the sound, but she's also slid that button to make it invisible. So then you just click on the speech bubble instead of seeing the sound. Jean. She's got a French conversation using an app called Sock Puppets. And then got another example. This was using Puppet Pals, another French conversation. Bonjour Sophie, ça va? Bonjour. Oui, ça va très bien. Et toi? Oui, pas mal. Je vais au cinéma ce soir. 
The next one here, it was a worksheet that a student had to fill out. So again, instead of typing it all up again, she took a photograph of the worksheet. She then added some student narration on top of that, shared the book with her teacher, and the teacher gave her some feedback in the form of a video this time. And that's that one. Okay, so that's all the examples. Jenny, is there any questions about the examples? Um, no, we've got some questions about apps, but if you are interested in some of uh, finding out about the use of some of the apps Susan's mentioned, it's worth going to the DigiLearn Scott YouTube channel, and that will allow you to see the evidence in learning through iPads, where um, I clips that she's used, um, Puppet Pals, etc., um, are demonstrated in there, and that will allow you to build up the books as Susan's done there. Excellent. The last thing I want to cover in this live demonstration is how you can export and share your books. Now you'll see underneath my book, it's simply called A New Book, so I need to change that title before I share it anywhere. So all I need to do here is just simply click on this title that says A New Book. Delete what's there and then just give it your own title. I can then click the export button. So we all know now, hopefully if you're using iPads, that that's your export button in any of the applications that are on an iPad. So I'm just gonna click export and I've got a few options in here. So let me just zoom in on that a little bit further so you can see them clearly. So we can export as an EPUB, but you do need EPUB software to open it. But that's the last one I'm gonna look at because it's really, really powerful. You can export it as a PDF. So if you do do that, then as long as your book only has text and, and images, then it'll be absolutely fine, but not if you've got any sound files or embedded files or any videos. You can export your whole book as a video. Now, um, when I worked in Aberdeenshire, we used to advise that to schools because it was a really nice way of just creating the one file, popping it into OneDrive to share with parents. So when the pupil logged it on to go at home, they could share that video from their OneDrive. Equally the same in G Drive, um, but if you have all your permissions in place and any other sharing platform that you already use in your school environment. But you can also publish your books online. Again, Jenny at the start talked about your information security officer, making sure that um, your GDPR was all in place. So we would always make sure that your local authority and your school are happy before you publish any content online. But I will show you an example of that as well. Okay, so I think we'll go to publish online first. So if I just go to Tim Peake Spacewalk, I have published it online already, and I'm just gonna click on the globe icon at the top right hand side. And I'm just gonna view it online. So if all your permissions are in place and you're allowed to publish online, this is a really nice way of sharing books with parents. If I click on the URL link at the top, it's absolutely massive so there's no way someone's going to find your book by accident they would need the link to access it so once they have the link then the, the end user if it's a parent or a colleague for example you can just click through that book friday 15th january 2016 tim peake became the first british astronaut to walk in space he was walking in space 250 miles above Earth. Again, you've got the read to me function at the top right hand side over here. So it could be read back to the end user. But we can just scroll through the book nice and easily. So that is a really nice, easy way of sharing a book online with any end user. OK, so just to recap, that was export and it was published online that we just looked at. So let's go back to my book. And the other options we want to look at is export as a video. Now, I knew we were going to do this. So I've exported my one already and it's in my camera roll. So when I go into my camera roll, I'm just going to play the book. I collected information about how we got to school. I then put all this information into an Excel spreadsheet and created a clips video about it.
So that's just going to scroll through my book. It's going to play each page. It's going to play the sound files. It's going to play the videos. So by saving it as a book, it's really, really useful. So let me just disconnect because when I do play it from there, it does turn my iPod. Okay, so now I'm back. So now we've looked at publish online and we've explored it as a video and we know how that saves in your camera roll and then you can pop that into Go to share in any other platforms like Google or Microsoft. Export as PDF, I'm not going to demonstrate that because it's fairly simple but no rich media. So let's look at export to ePub, the very top one. So when I click on export to ePub, I've got a few options along the top here. So if I could export it into my OneNote, and it would just save it as a uh, file. So let's just try that just now. Export it into my OneNote. I can see that it's going to go into my literacy page at the top, but I could change that page, page if I so wish and click Send. When I open up my OneNote, I would then get hold my finger on the EPUB and I would select to open it in Book Creator. So I would need that Book Creator app either on my Chrome browser or I would need it on my um, iPad. The next one, if I click export to EPUB, is Teams. And you can see that's along the top. So that might be quite popular just now because lots of our schools are using Teams for remote learning. At the top, I can select two, and I can select an individual person. So I could send my book directly to Jenny because you can see she's come up in my recent chat. Or I can send it to a particular team just by starting to type in the team name. So I've got a team called PLC Demo. So I could select that team and then I could just click send at the top of the hand side there. But in true Blue Peter style, I've done that already. So I'd like to show you now how what it looks like. So let me go into Teams. And you can see there's my digital book. And it's been uploaded into the main general channel. If I click on the three dots over here, I get an option to copy that book. So let me just click on it. So send a copy. Now, once I click send a copy, it will download that book. And it'll give me the option. If I just click on more, see more over here, to select book creator copy to book creator. So that will take a second, but it's given me a copy. So now I have my own digital book, but I also have a copy of it. So that means from a teacher's perspective, I could then add some feedback or comments onto that book. And then I could click the export as EPUB and send it back through Teams or back to the individual user. But you can do that equally easily if you're using Google Classroom. So let's try. Export, export as EPUB, and this time select Classroom. That apps will only appear there if you have them installed on your iPad. Let me just zoom in here. So this is my class. So I can, if I just scroll down, create an assignment. So I can create an assignment based on that book. So that could be a template that I push out to my young people for them to complete, to then send back to me. So let's see how that would look. So this is it from a teacher's perspective, how I could create an assignment with this ebook attached to it. So I'm going to go back into my classes by clicking on the title, Susan's class in Globe. And this time I'm going to select George's class because I'm a student in George's class. Let me zoom in. So now I have the option from a student's perspective to attach my book to, that, to an assignment. When I click attach to assignment, I will then get to choose which assignment I want to attach that book to. So as a teacher, you can push a book out. and As a student, you can upload a book as an asset as an assignment, as an attachment to an assignment. And that's if you have the apps included on your iPod. 
Okay, so hopefully that's given you a few options of how you can export and share your books. The first thing we did was how we could create a book and it had different pages. We then went in and we looked at different examples of books, etc. So hopefully that's given you a taster, but hopefully you can also see how you could use it with your learners in your environment. Is there any questions before I hand back, Jenny? Um, no, I've covered them in the chat, but thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you, Susan. So as Susan has demonstrated, there are several ways to share, export and publish your document. You can use ePublisher, PDF, video or publish online using uh, YouTube to, if you have permissions in place to share a video that's been created of a book that your young people may have created or that you have created for your young people. If you have the paid app or are using the web service, you can do co collaboration of um, books to create one giant library of evidencing, evidencing learning across all of the classrooms. But it's also worth considering the use of screen record and airdrop in order to access information which you may want to put into a book that you've created or one where you want to share the learning that's taken place on the screen. It's also useful if you want to use um, demonstrate a process um, and you can then input that into the book creator um, app and so that your young people can review the process that you've gone through and then replicate it within their own learning. Where you can go for help and support. So Book Creator has a very extensive um, website. It has a variety of uh, resources on it as well as a blog that demonstrates how other practitioners may be using these tools. Um, it also will highlight um, new features that have been added into it. It's a place where you can go to get support but also suggest ideas and if you are interested there is the additional information that you can find out if you don't want to use just the free app that we've demonstrated today. Um, as well as all of that, it has a range of resources um, that support remote learning as well as learning within a school environment. And these resources are all identified by stage as well as subject. So again, when we're looking at the curricular area, we can identify quickly and easily some resources that they may already have available or to, to give us some ideas of how we may take forward our learning and teaching. There is also a newsletter which you can sign up to via the website and there is a fantastic book called 50 ways to use book creator in your classroom. It's suited, it's got examples from early year settings right through to secondary level. It's how you apply it in a creative way um, so it's definitely worth the read. It has a Twitter feed as well as DigiLearn Scott. Um, it's always worth if you don't already please follow DigiLearn Scott. Let us know how you're using any of the tools that we show you on any of these webinars and let us know if you're doing something or would like to see something through our Twitter feed and just to recap the items that we've covered today we've looked at how to access um, book creator and what um, browsers it's compatible with as well as which devices we've looked at the benefits of using rich media and i've given you an overview of book creator susan's taken you through in depth all of the range of features um, that can be used within your book when you're creating it or your young people are creating it to demonstrate their learning. And then we've looked at how you would share, export and publish your ebook. We've shown you where that you can um, access feedback and also how you can access help and support in the future as well. That leaves us just to say thank you very much. Um, please, like I say, hashtag DigiLearnScott or tag in the Education Scotland Twitter feed or the DigiLearnScott one. It's always worth um, having a look at the DigiLearnScott blog. There's lots of um, ideas in there for people to share, as well as we would love to hear you, from you as guest bloggers. So if you're wanting to do one about a new product that you've maybe been using, a new way that you've applied a tool for your pedagogical practice, Practice, we would love to hear from you. So um, even if you're a novice or um, really experienced in using something, we want to hear how you're using a digital tool um, for learning and teaching. So please go to the DigiLearn Scott and have a look at the guest blog section um, and nominate yourself for it. We'd love to hear from everybody.